Hello and welcome to the video. This is Matthew and we're going to look at question one, which is a 30 mark question on algebra. So we're going to start off with part A and this is worth 10 marks. And this wants us to solve the simultaneous equation and we're given two equations. Now, this is slightly different as we're given a linear and a non-linear equation. So we have to do it slightly differently. So the first thing I do with the linear and non-linear equation when we're doing simultaneous equations is labeling the linear one and the non-linear one. So to identify the linear one, it's the one without any exponents. So in other words, it has no, for example, x squared or no x cubed or you know y squared or y cubed either. So that means that the first equation there on top is going to be our linear equation. But the equation on the bottom has an x squared. So therefore, that's nonlinear. So the next thing to do is to write the linear equation as one variable in terms of the other. So that's to have x equal to everything else or y equal to everything else. And actually here it's already written as x in terms of everything else. So it's x equal to 2y minus 10. So then I'm going to substitute in 2y minus 10 for x in our nonlinear equation and then solve for y. So that'll give me 2y minus 10 squared minus 2y minus 10 by y is equal to minus 12. So 2y minus 10 squared will give me 4y squared minus 40y plus 100. And then 2y minus 10 by y will give me 2y squared minus 10y. But don't forget this minus here. Then it's going to be minus 2y squared plus 10y. That's equal to minus 12. So now I'm going to add all the like terms together. So I have 4y squared minus 2y squared. That will give me 2y squared. Then I have minus 40y plus 10y, which gives me minus 30y. And then I'm going to plus 12 to both sides so that I have 0 on the right hand side. And we can do 100 plus 12, which is obviously 112. So that gives us 2y squared minus 30y plus 112 is equal to 0, which is a quadratic trinomial. As we have three different terms, one of them is a y squared, another one has a y, and then the other one is just a constant. So to solve this, we can use our minus b formula or the guide number method. Either way, we'll get to the same answer. First of all, though, I'm going to divide this by 2 as it'll make it easy for us. So that gives me y squared minus 15y plus 56 is equal to 0. And now we're ready to solve for y. So factorizing this, I get y minus 8 by y minus 7, and they're equal to 0. So now, as a result of that, I can put y minus 8 equal to 0 and y minus 7 equal to 0, which gives y is equal to 8 and y is equal to 7. Now, we're not done here, though. We have our y values, but we also defined the corresponding x values. And to do that, we're going to sub these y values back into the linear equation and then solve for x. So just a reminder that our linear equation was x is equal to 2y minus 10. So now we're going to say when y is equal to 8, x is going to be equal to 2 by 8 minus 10, which gives x is equal to 6. And now we're going to do that when y is equal to 7, x is equal to 2 times by 7 minus 10, which gives x is equal to 4. So therefore, our two coordinates are 6, 8 and 4, 7. And that's our answer for part A of the question. Now we're going to look at part B, which is also worth 10 marks. So part B wants us to solve x squared plus x minus 10 is smaller than or equal to 10 for all real values of x. So this is an inequality, which means at the end we're going to have an inequality in our answer. So I'm going to write it out first of all. So I want to have a 0 on the right hand side there, so I'm going to minus 10 from both sides, which gives me x squared plus x minus 20 is smaller than or equal to 0. So now I have x squared plus x minus 20 is smaller than or equal to 0. So now I have to factorize the left hand side using the guide number method or just using simple algebra. So with that we get x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 4 is smaller than or equal to 0. So now I'm going to put both brackets equal to 0 to get a value for x. So it's x plus 5 is equal to 0 and x minus 4 is equal to 0. So then we get x is equal to minus 5 and x is equal to 4. But remember it's an inequality so this isn't our final answer. To figure out how to do the inequality sign, I like to draw out a graph. This hasn't got to be perfect, just a rough sketch on the side. So this is a positive quadratic, and we found the roots of x to be minus 5 and 4. So a positive quadratic will always have a u-shape, crossing the x-axis at minus 5 and 4. So now the function was smaller than or equal to 0 up here. So we need to find the values for x where that is smaller than or equal to 0, and that will be below the x-axis in this area here. So that's going to be for values of x between or equal to minus 5 and 4. So sometimes you may have it above the x-axis and then your answer will be split. So you'll have two separate ones. 
So when you have your function smaller than or equal to zero, normally then your x will be between two numbers. However, when it's larger than or equal to zero, then normally you'll have two separate parts. So you'll have x is smaller than or equal to some number and then x is bigger than or equal to some other number. So as I said, this was one where it's smaller than or equal to zero. So it's all the one x is between or equal to minus five and four. So that's our answer for part B. And now we're gonna move on to the final part of the question, part C, which is also worth 10 marks. So this wants us to prove that a squared plus 5b squared is greater than or equal to 2ab for all real values of a and b. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to minus 2ab from both sides, which gives me a squared minus 2ab plus 5b squared is greater than or equal to 0. Now you might be familiar with this rule and that's that a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So you can see here that I have a squared minus 2ab. So if I was to be able to get b squared from this 5b squared, I would be able to rewrite that as a minus b squared and a minus b squared will always be positive as any real number squared will be positive. So I'm going to take 5b squared to be b squared plus 4b squared, which gives me a squared minus 2ab plus b squared plus 4b squared is greater than or equal to zero. And now this a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is the same as a minus b squared from this rule that I showed you up here. So I'm going to rewrite that as a minus b squared and then we have plus 4b squared greater than or equal to zero. So we know that the a minus b squared must be positive. We also know that b squared must be positive as any number squared is positive, and any number that's positive multiplied by another positive number, in this case four, will be positive. So therefore, this is always true as any real number squared is greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, a squared plus 5b squared is greater than or equal to 2ab. So that's our answer for part C, the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.